My name is Jamie Blair. My name is Jacob White. I'm a carbon fibre fabricator. My name is Adam Waterhouse and I'm one of the mechanical engineers here at Roden Cars. So my name's Daniel, Daniel Pugh. My name's Matt Purdy. I'm a mechanical engineer here at Roden Cars. Uh, my name is Daniel and I'm a machinist. I'm Courtney from Roden Cars. I am in charge of the purchasing and logistics and I'd like to thank everybody for submitting their questions on our LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram pages for our Ask an Engineer section. Jamie Gibson on Facebook has asked, have we set any laps at Hanton Downs? If we haven't, do we intend to? No, we haven't. And yes, there are always opportunities to go to different tracks. It's usually timing and when you can get there and what is the situation. Phil Memory on LinkedIn would like to know what is the wet weight of the FZ? Should be 610. Paul's first question is, what aerodynamic goals did you start off with at the beginning with the FZ? We didn't design the aerodynamics for the FZ. It is a Lotus T125 that has been redeveloped by us to be made in-house and be high quality. So we did not play with the aerodynamics on that. Well, on the F0, the aim was uh, 4,000 kilograms of downforce at 300K. We've done all the aero with CFD and we're up to around about that sort of number. And it's probably even too much really, but you can always bleed it back a bit. For the F0, we, that car is entirely designed in-house and originally by David, the whole concept is David. So the aerodynamics on that car um, were developed to produce a vehicle that is better than current Formula One. Paul's second question was what compromises were made on other aspects of the car to hit the aerodynamic goal or vice versa, what aero compromises were made for another aspect of the FZ? Although we didn't design the aero for the FZ, it is compromised because it was supposed to appear like a period correct F1. And so that is why the wing is short. The rear wing is short and the body looks like it does. And so there are compromises there, but it is supposed to be the golden era of F1 with the proper sound and the proper appearance. The F0 is intended to be a compromise of nothing. It is wanted to be the best it can be in every aspect. And so we have developed it as such. Like the F1 guys, the car is designed with the aero in mind right from the start. I mean, aero do, do, uh, dominates the entire design process and all the other stuff has to fit in with, with that really. So I designed the whole car in effect as an aerodynamic device and only leaving just enough space to fit all the bits and pieces in and even that was a bit tight. Kevlev Official on Instagram notes that it was mentioned the car does not require an army of mechanics and engineers to operate. Kevlev would like to know what does it require from an owner to run? The owner could borderline run the car by itself to be honest. Um, the only reason you really need another person is to remove the battery after it's been cranked and fired up when you're going to drive away. Um, so otherwise there is tyre preheating, engine preheating that is all automated um, by other systems and so you simply need to unplug them before you hop in the car and it's off. You could get by with the driver and a mechanic and most of that's to do with strapping seat belts and connecting external jump battery. Excellent question from Ars Grady on Instagram. They would like to know what makes the FZ different from the T125 in terms of what is offered to the customer. My understanding is that T125 was sold as part of a quite a big package where Lotus would come out with teams and things and look after you and give you a whole experience type thing. The FZ is different to the T125 through it being produced in a way that it can actually be just operated by an owner on a Saturday afternoon where you can go out and enjoy it. It doesn't require anyone to come and run the engine for you, it doesn't require anyone to overlook the car for you. It's designed so it could operate functionally um, but also be very low maintenance and achievable. JP924 on Instagram would like to know, do you guys have a DIL simulator with RF Pro and your own track loaded onto it? For simulators, we are very lucky here at Rodent to have our own test track. So a lot of the things that you perhaps, or big teams would perhaps for limited testing, use simulations, wind tunnels, that we have the luxury of being having the actual test track and we can just instrument and test. Beth Hunter on Instagram would like to know what career paths have you taken and how would you recommend starting to get involved in motorsport from an engineering perspective? I mean, you can learn all the theory, but until you do the hands-on, um, you need to gain that experience and be prepared to fail. There's a lot of failure at the start 
and um, learn from your mistakes. To get into motorsport from an engineering perspective, um, I would follow after that, so I would get involved in motorsport where you can. I went to university and studied mechanical engineering. I, there were no racing car projects or anything at the university at the time. They developed at the very end of my time there, and so I got involved as heavily as I could and worked on my own cars in the weekend and chased after that. This job though is um, no effort of my own. This was right place, right time, and I was fortunate enough to be um, chosen by David to join the team. My career path was through a mechanical engineering degree at Canterbury University. Um, the major component of that that led me to this was the Formula SAE project. If you're a young engineer, that's a great way to get into the industry and it gives you a good taste without necessarily having to commit um, a lot of your personal expense to actually try that. Obviously motorsport's quite an expensive sport to be in and if you're doing it on your own, it's, it's, you need a lot of funding behind you to get started. So a project such as SAE gets you into that before having to commit all that money. While having an uh, engineering degree is helpful, I think more being involved and passionate about the cars and looking to perhaps help out and work with some teams and work from there is probably the what I would think would probably be the best way to get into a motorsport. Alex and Ruger Hescu says that our company is admirable and naturally they'd like to work with us. Feel free to send your CV in through our website. As an engineering student currently living in Europe, what do you need to be able to be a part of Roden? The main thing we look for for working here is predominantly being able to have the appropriate visas and stuff to work in New Zealand. Um, past that it's yeah, based on merits of what you've done or what you're interested in and passionate about. The main thing is being passionate and willing to learn.